should fly out. If you're listening or, or watching online, uh, streaming at stltoday.com, that was recently released cell phone recording of the explosion a year ago of the fertilizer plant in West Texas. Today is the year anniversary of that explosion. Uh, that was a cell phone recording from Derek Hurt. Very dramatic, uh, horrible, horrible blast that, that ended up take, taking 15 lives, destroying 120 homes damaging 200 others across 37 blocks. It was it was such a big story that didn't get anywhere near the sort of national coverage that it might have if it hadn't have been in the aftermath of, of the Boston Marathon bombing, uh, which consumed us in, in because of the, the terrorism aspect of it, and, and yet the explosion in West Texas really claimed more lives and, and really has a lot of sort of lasting uh, issues uh, for this country to deal with because of the lack of regulation in Texas that's been uh, well examined by the Dallas Morning News and others uh, down there. We're going to talk this morning with Jim Ryan from ABC. Uh, Jim's on the line. Jim, how are you doing? Morning, Tony. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. Tell us, tell us what's going on in West uh, a year after the explosion. Well, I just took a drive uh, through the neighborhood where West Fertilizer Company used to stand. It's uh, just a big empty lot now. The ground's scraped clean. The neighborhoods around there are gradually rebuilding. Many of the houses are being rebuilt. Others have been simply abandoned or waiting to be torn down. The community as a whole will come together this evening to remember the moment one year later that the West Fertilizer uh, Company exploded killing 15, injuring hundreds more. Have, have people sort of moved away that you know, even the people that uh, were in part of the community that maybe wasn't uh, as damaged as those who lost their lives in their homes, have people moved well, away or is the population well, staying steady? Well, for a few, I think it was a matter of necessity. Uh, there was a nursing home that was destroyed by the explosion. People who worked there have had to find jobs elsewhere in Waco or, or in, uh, in Austin or in Dallas-Fort Worth. Others have uh, almost stubbornly decided that they will rebuild, that they'll take the insurance money, and instead of moving away, they're, they're going to, to plant new routes, and, and that's being done all over this community. It was primarily on the north part of town uh, that uh, so much of the effect has been seen. Down south in west, uh, the, the effect is much less noticeable, and in fact, people are are uh, you know quite uh, joyfully celebrating that uh, that the community is being rebuilt. Is the is the sort of reminder down there? Is it is it somber because of the you know the fifteen deaths and, and and what a horrible situation this is? Or is there a you know sometimes these anniversaries are hopeful because towns are rebuilding? What's the mood? It's both really. I talked with the mayor just a short time ago about that very thing, and yes, while well, it'll be a somber uh, commemoration of the people who were killed, it is a celebration. It's a, a chance to, to celebrate the coming of two new schools to replace the ones that were destroyed, and a new infrastructure in terms of the water supply and, and some of the roads around that area. So yes, there there is this sense of renaissance, but there is also, I think, at the back of people's mind that sense that, uh, that lives have been lost and other lives have been changed forever. Has there been a change at all, Jim, in the sense of, of safety that exists? I mean, the big part of this story that that maybe got lost in some of the national discussion but, but has been followed by a, a lot of the media in Texas is, is uh, uh, both the lack of regulation and the lack of following existing regulation that in many cases uh, some people believe, you know, really led to the explosion. Has there been much of a change <clears throat> in public policy as it relates to the storage of, of large amounts of fertilizer, and is there a sense of safety uh, in the community? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, this plant was about 50 years old, uh, and, and obviously much of the, the safety feature uh, that was there was antiquated. And just this week, there was a hearing in Austin of uh, a House subcommittee talking about that very thing and changes that have been made in regulation since then. Part of it is just knowing exactly where this sort of stuff is being stored. 
Uh, it, previously, regulators weren't, weren't precisely sure where ammonium nitrate like this was being stored and how much of it was in these facilities. Uh, that's been changed now. Uh, they've fine-tuned some of those laws to ensure that inspectors can get in, can take a closer look, and, uh, and, and ensure that the law is being followed. Also then changes in how this stuff is being handled. It has to be separated from other chemicals. There can't be uh, vehicles uh, too close to uh, where this stuff is being stored. It's thought that it was a faulty golf cart that started the fire that led to the explosion here. So is the plant itself going to rebuild? Yeah, in some form or fashion, either either that company or a different one. The place, uh, obviously, where this plant stood is just a, an empty lot now, but there is talk that a different factory might be built uh, to much more modern standards. Jim, do the do the people in the community down down there are they are they welcoming the national coverage? Uh, are, do they do they appreciate uh, uh, their community being on front pages of newspapers all across the country and on telecast? I think so. I mean, I, I, I know what you're getting at there. There is uh, kind of that sense of fatigue among among some people. But certainly on the official front, the mayor and the city manager, the other uh, local leaders do welcome it. They see it as an opportunity to uh, to put this community, uh, you know, front and center again in the national eye, uh, both in terms of safety regulations, but also because it's kind of a nice little town. And, and how about the families of the victims? Is there, as, as the town remembers what happened are there specific sort of memorials for uh, specific you know fam- people who lost you know entire families or family members in the explosion sure yeah and, and uh, much of it is, is deals with uh, the first responders 12 of the 15 people who were killed were volunteer firefighters and the mo- there's a memorial at the uh, the town hall or the, the fire hall not too far away from the site of the explosion that uh, commemorates the lives of those 12 volunteer firefighters. Now, you're in West now, uh, but is is all of Texas sort of making a big deal out of this, or is this really localized in terms of just remembering this explosion today? It's primarily a, a West and Central Texas kind of commemoration, but I, I think that, uh, that that in terms of regulation and safety and, and how chemicals like this are handled, it will be a statewide sort of thing, whether people recognize that it was a, a response to West Texas or uh, or not. I, I think it's going to have long-reaching uh, ripple effects. Thanks, Jim. Jim. ABC's Jim Ryan joining us live from West Texas as we commemorate the year anniversary of the horrible explosion of the fertilizer plant that uh, claimed 15 lives, destroyed 120 homes, damaged 200 others. West Texas appear, appears to be rebuilding and, and sort of taking a hopeful tone today, one year after uh, the explosion that changed their town. You're listening to the Big 550 KTRS. Tony Messenger filling in for McGraw-Millhaven.